philosophical reference to Wilhelm Wundt to develop his psychology was Immanuel Kant. But as we will see with the other influences he received, he goes beyond what previous philosophers or scientists were proposing. In the case of Kant, he took the aspect of an active, constructive mind. But, on the other hand, Immanuel Kant thought that psychology could not be a science. He proposed anthropology instead of psychology. And Wilhelm Wundt changed that dramatically. He was the father of today's experimental and scientific psychology. The second main influence was the psychophysics of Gustav Fachner. So Gustav Fachner used to provide stimulus to participants and then participants told him what was their conscious experience, sometimes about sensations or, or the weight of objects, for example. That will be influential in Wilhelm Wundt, but as we will see later, he will change the not too much the type of experiments, but the goals of the experiments, and that is a substantial change in the way of conducting them. Finally, Wilhelm Wundt's psychology is mostly influenced by the physiology of Her Hermann von Helmholtz. Helmholtz was um, Wundt's mentor, and they actually share one idea. There is an unconscious inference that the brain or the mind produces, and that explains the way we perceive things. Actually, there is a dispute about who came with, with that idea first, whether it was Wundt's first idea or Helmholtz's idea. In any case, this uh, idea was uh, maintained by Helmholtz, but Wundt abandoned it, and he concentrated in the issue of consciousness. So, what's Wundt's psychology about? So, Wundt's psychology is about the immediate experience, or in other words, consciousness. So, Wundt's psychology it's not about a mental substance that may have structures or faculties, like, for example, the idea of a mind as a sort of container in which there are some compartments, like some places where the memory processes occur, and other places where the decision-making occur occurs, in other places the problem-solving or thinking, and other places is where perception occurs and attention and so on and so forth. This idea of a sort of substance with compartments or faculties, that's alien to Wundt's psychology. Psychology is all about the experience, the total experience, conscious experience of people. Now, when we talk about experience, we, not, we don't talk about a, an intros, introspection, observing one's thoughts or one's feelings, but actually living an experience as a subject. And perhaps the best way of describing it is this picture of, uh, or drawing of a uh, Mach, a... Uh, a physicist who was the, an empiricist, um, he drew this uh, perception of himself, which includes most of his body. And, and that's the idea of consciousness for Wundt. It is an observation of the world and being a subject of that world at the same time. Now, psychology, for Wundt, is the most fundamental of the sciences. 
because it deals with the totality of the experience, whereas all the other sciences, they have to abstract one aspect of experience, which is the subject of that experience. So physics needs these ex um, conscious experience of the researchers to propose principles of how things work. He is a perhaps you can call Wunder phenomenologist in this respect, saying that, yes, there is a reality, but the only way we perceive reality is through our conscious experience. So physicists deal with conscious experiences. Conscious experiences about the world, we, perhaps we can postulate that the world exists out there, but we only have the conscious experience. The only difference between psychology and the other sciences is that psychology takes the total experience, which includes the subject. The other sciences, they will exclude the, the subject of the experience in order to deal and explain things of that part of the experience that supposedly is reflecting what's happening out there in the world. And, as mentioned before, psychology takes tools from physiology. We are going to... Uh, a psychologist a la Wund will apply stimulus and observe responses. But the type of responses we are going to observe or measure in psychology are very different than the ones observed in physiology. And also, Wundt proposed sort of two types of psychology. One is the psychology of the individual mind. And for that one, he used very objective measures. But he also talked about a sort of cultural psychology or social psychology, in which psychological, historical and biological principles of development should be taken into account. And for that type of psychology, he investigated cultures and productions like languages and cultural products. And the name that he himself gave to his psychology is voluntarism, which is very interesting because in until very recently, Wundt's psychology was um, presented to the world on the eyes of an American psychologist, Dichener, who was a student of Wundt, and brought Wundt's psychology to America. But he gave Wundt's psychology his own twist. And that psychology was, was well known as structuralism. It was a, a much. It was a different type of psychology, um, but he he presented that psychology as the psychology proposed by Wundt. But Wundt gave the name of voluntarism because he thought that the mind is creative and dynamic. That comes from Kant. And the process, one of the mental processes that of probably the most important that can, uh, Wundt proposed was a perception. And a perception has to do with giving meaning to stimuli by the use of knowledge, selective attention, and active choice. So what we perceive about the world is not just a copy that we passively receive, a copy of what's out there in the world, we give meaning using our knowledge, using some processing of that information that we receive from the world. He also was interested in studying emotions and volition and not just cognition like it was more the psychophysics of Fechner. And also philosophers in the past were more interested in cognitive aspects of the mind. <laughs>